uh, in reflection, there's just so much good stuff to look back on. Um, just, I guess, such a hard-working grafter is, um, is what any of us can, can hope to follow and do for our family. It appears tears are pretty good at degreasing chainsaws. Hi folks, I'm Tim. Welcome to The Restoration Couple. Today's video is a bit of an update, a bit of a heart to heart and also a chance to dust off some old tools. So stick around and we'll make a start. It's happened again. Bird flu is back and the birds are all in. They have got a pen over here, but for now, whilst it's really wet, they're in the polytunnel. Hi girls. much warmer in here but it's warm enough. I'm really not dressed for today. This is my nice jacket. Anyway. Right in an attempt not to ruin and get all of our new work topped oily I'll use this old bench and we need to see how this old saw has fared being sat in the shed for a year or two without use. Not ideal. I'm too lazy to go and change, so I found my old world in apron. I hope everyone's well. Sorry it's been a little bit jumbled on the channel lately. We're obviously trying to get a lot of things sorted at the farm and obviously trying to sell this house still and go through all those formalities. So there's a lot of emailing, planning consultants, architects, surveyors, structural engineers, you name it, we're uh, using them. Spend a lot of money on it as well. Right, how does this come off? What I'm doing is I'm just digging out this saw because one, I need to make sure it still can fire up and do its thing. Um, and two, I just think there's a bunch of jobs like this where I can't do it because I can't get the... I'm pretty sure this is all toolless. Anyway, there's a bunch of jobs like this where I think I'm not going to have the time to be messing around uh, in the future, I don't think. Oh, there we go. So... I, I, if I've got a few spare moments in the next few weeks, then it, I want to get all this stuff done, whether it's servicing bits, um, I've got you know my old generator, that's not started in 10 years probably, um, but it might be handy when we're out on the farm. I think this was a new chain, so that's all good. We will give it a sharpen. Green oak and sort of uh, wet woods just, it's not like when you see dry chips flying. It really is just gummy, tannin ridden gunk. Hopefully I don't need to go too far on this strip down because there'll become a point where I haven't got a foggy as what I'm doing. I'm hoping I drain this down. I, I didn't. I didn't at all. There's a tiny bit in there actually. We could try firing it up now. There's probably no harm in that, apart from that we're in a workshop. One of my reasons for today's video is ah, things have got to change a little bit on the channel. We can't continue by, when it's just the two of us, putting together higher produced videos with start to finish projects and music and all that sort of stuff when we want to put more content out because it's just there's only so many hours in the day and I think it's only right that we try and make it a little bit more stripped back and if you imagine the sort of stuff we share in our stories on Instagram they're just a bit more candid and perhaps a little bit more real life and truthful so I think it will only be a benefit to the channel if we share all the highs and lows you know we're going to be going through so many challenges over the next few months and years whether it's you know dealing with utilities and architects and suppliers, planning, um, all those things. If we skim over, if we try and become sort of a, 
um, a Channel 4 documentary where it's just the, the highlights or, you know, the big moments where the windows get swung in and, and all these sort of things, then I think it's just going to give that false perception of how easy life is when it's really not. So expect just a little change and I'm sure it'll be incremental and we'll still have the, the start to finish project videos in amongst all that. But I think if we can switch to getting more content out for you guys, it can't be a bad thing. But we'll just try and be really honest and share all of our mistakes, all of our um, learning process. Because if we just, like I say, if we just um, go with the the frilly bits and some sort of country file shots of the fields and grand design shots of the finished house, it's not doing anyone any favours. And that's something I've, I've not got right over the past year or two. I think there's stuff I should have... I skimmed over because I didn't think it was a benefit to the channel, but I think it really should have been. And that was uh, one of the big things that happened last year, was um, my granddad passed away. And I never never shared it because I thought there's no need to share it and everyone was having enough t bad you know, luck as it was with everything that's going on. But there was something quite... Um, quite important about Grandad and his influence on me that I just feel like this channel really um, needed to know. And Grandad was um, was a real classic English, English sort of farm type. And he, uh, he had a farm, small farm, about four or five acres. And it was his family's built, you know, farm. And I think he was born there or born next door. And there was this nice heritage and family history to that farm. And of course, when I was about 18, they, they got into their 70s, I guess, and they needed to downsize. And that was a bit of a wrench for me as an 18 year old, having grown up, all of us grandkids growing up, enjoying that place and just so many memories that we felt a little bit, um, or certainly I did, felt you know really gutted that that chapter of our family history was was gone because someone else was going to buy it and that's fine you know buildings come and go but I'm I'm a bit of a I don't know maybe just a bit of an emotional sissy but I, I just love that stuff I love the, the sort of uh, the family history and the, the third fourth generation farms and all that sort of stuff where you, everyone knows every square inch of a place I love that so in some respects that's what we're creating for ourselves in a sort of parallel universe now. Um, Granddad had three girls, my mum being one of them, and it wasn't a working farm, so it was just a, essentially a small holding, a hobby farm type size. And it would have been um, in none of their interests, I guess, to um, to have taken it on. So it, it we've kind of skipped a generation. Granddad, my great grandfather was a farmer. Granddad farmed, he had another job as well. Um, but all of the stuff I, I I was like a sponge. I was probably an annoying uh, grandson. You know, I was always there asking him questions, watching him turn wood. <laughs> he was a really good carpenter as well. And and I went to the dispersal sale um, when they sold their house, I sold the farm. You know, the auctioneer came and sold off everything from the classic tractor to his band saws, table saws, all the really you know sides and. Ugh, stuff I you know would love now uh, and that's just the ebb and flow of country life you know and um, the number of small farms that that go and uh, deceased estates and all that sort of stuff it's just the nature of um of rural history I guess but I feel like uh, it's urged me to 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 get some legacy into our family now and we're moving very close to where granddad lived um, that's more of a coincidence than anything, but I feel like there's some big shoes to fill and some footsteps to follow. And it would be if I can create the sort of environment that he did for his kids and grandkids, then that's a good thing. And Grandad was an incredibly <laughs> strong guy. He uh, he was. You know this sort of strength that you only get from a lifetime of grafting. So he, uh, he, even when we were like 18, he would show us, you know, he'd get a great big sledgehammer and just lift it up by his side. And all of us, you know, there's me as an 18 year old rugby player, not a chance. Um, 
So they were, and when we moved in here, he was in his. They probably just moved from the farm. They downsized to a bungalow, which was probably a great relief for them. And he still kept a lot of his kit. He had, you know, still brush cutters and strimmers. And he came down here and helped clear this garden when we moved into the house. And some of you will know what a jungle we took on. So there's some great memories, and I can't wait to to live some of that lifestyle now. But going from being an amazingly resourceful, wise, kind, and strong family man to, within years, becoming, I guess, a shell. Um, that was really hard to, to be a, a, a spectator of, to, to witness that, you know, dementia and Alzheimer's taking over someone and like, just, cripples their, their being, you know, their whole self. It appears tears are pretty good at degreasing chainsaws. Anyway, I, I feel a certain degree of guilt because I felt like we lost... I felt like we kind of lost Grandad a couple of years before he actually passed away. And I don't think I detached my, <sighs> and I don't think I detached myself intentionally away from him. But there's just that <sighs> you feel, you feel like um, I think you just feel gutted for them as a person. I mean, just such a horrible, horrible way to. Um, <clears throat> Just a horrible way to end your end your innings, but uh, in reflection, there's just so much good stuff to look back on. Um, just I guess such a hardworking grafter is um, is what any of us can can hope to follow and do for our family. Anyway, last year before the funeral, a couple of days before the funeral, my mum asked me if I would. Um, be able to make a simple cross for um, to mark the grave, and uh, of course I was happy to do that. Uh, I actually I felt a bit bad in retrospect. I de I declined and I declined the chance to speak at the funeral. Um, I'm a bit of a sobber. I have become a bit of an emotional mess. So um, my brothers and cousins took that role, even though I was the eldest. And I'm, I'm really pleased because they did such a great job. And I think um, doing the cross was just my little way of quietly having my, of having my sort of way of, of saying goodbye. So the cross, I, I didn't want to, I could have easily made a post or a story or something back, back then, but it just didn't feel right. It didn't, there was no reason to make content on it, but I'd love to share a few images of it now because it was um, it was a great thing to be able to to make for him. So the the cross was made up of several timbers. Grandad lived at the firs. That was the name of his house with my nanny. And uh, so I used some Douglas fir. It's one of the inlay strips. And there was pear and apple wood because of the orchards that he had at the farm. And then the actual cross body itself was um, Sapili, I think it was an African hardwood because they spent a lot of their time in uh, in Africa traveling and I thought it was kind of uh, no one really needed to know the meaning of all the woods but I did and that was that was enough and I really it was my way of reflecting I guess and then the next uh, well, earlier this year I actually I kept back some of that inlay strip and I planed when I planed it down, it, it left these beautiful ribbons, tricolour ribbons of the three different woods. Um, so I, not that I'm really into epoxy, but I tried my hand at epoxy and I made some moulds up and and I set some of the ribbons in the epoxy and I gave them to my mum and her sisters as a little keepsake. So, but that was my little way of um, making something probably like how Grandad would have wanted. He was very, very much, um, he had an eye for detail. And 
in the future, perhaps I'll take you up to his garage and his workshop because it's like the day he left it. There is a half turn bowl on the lathe. There's all of his gear out on the workbench. Um, and it's, it's a bit eerie, but it would be lovely to be able to share that. And you just by seeing it, I'm sure you'll get, get a feeling for the man he was. <sighs> Told you I was a sobber. That was not intentional. Needless to say, Grandad, I'm sure, would have loved the farm and what we're aiming to do there. And hopefully we'll get a chance one day to take my nanny there. Um, she might have to be chauffeured in a 4 before, but um, unfortunately nanny is suffering the same um, the same problems in her last years as well and again nanny's an amazing human being um, just as, you know an incredibly resourceful um, person well, you know from everything from the traditional skills through to being you know amazing artist and just a wonderful person and I, maybe this video is what I needed to realise that I need to spend more time with Nanny. Right, I've been just stood here stroking this chainsaw during the video. Let's at least see if it'll start up and then I'll get on and clean it. I won't bore you with that. We haven't actually been back up to the farm since all the storms last week, so we are expecting several trees to be down. And while this little saw is not really up to anything too big, it'll certainly give us a head start. When we are eventually up on site all the time, then we're going to be looking to gear ourselves up a little bit more for the woodland work. Um, but this, if we're going to need a chainsaw, we may as well use what we've got. Right, I mean it's running, I think it's just old fuel or hardly any fuel in there. So uh, we'll call that a mild success. I like smoking out the workshop. Anyway, getting back to today's video, thank you for putting up with me, my blubbing and, and sharing. But Jay thought this would be a great way to perhaps raise even more awareness and some money for uh, an Alzheimer's charity. So I'm actually going to leave a link down in the description to a raffle that Joe's set up on the website. It is simply buy a ticket and all the funds raised will go to the charity. And we're going to bundle a whole bunch of stuff for you and hopefully get it all out before Christmas. So, I cannot even remember what she's told me is included. I can remember that she's making up these hats. So there is one of the, well, the first hat will be included. There's also a print. I will run in and grab that. We're making a series of prints from the beams that we've used in previous projects. So we've got the Douglas fir beams from this building that we're in now. We've created a screen print from that and same with uh, the oak frame as well so you'll see those come up on the website and we'll let people know when they're available but the winner of the raffle will get one of those i believe there's also a t-shirt involved and a mug plus one of the other jobs i'm on at the moment is finishing some of these serving boards and charcuterie boards so this oak charcuterie board which is made from one of the oak beams uh, in our porch build is also going to be in the raffle I think it's this one, might be the other one, but either way, one of them is gonna be included. I won't pretend to know any of the details because Joe has been doing all of that in the background. So head over to that link and you can find everything you need to know there. Anyway, thank you for your continued support and excitement for the farm project. We can't wait to share more up there. I know it's a bit of a drawn out process this bit, but believe me, once we're there, it'll be non-stop fun and we'll be on the tools all the time. So thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time. They're all gone for a drink of water now, because they're very hot and very thirsty. Oh.
Cheers. 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 Cheers, Timmy. Cheers. Here we go. You've got red moustache now. Cheers, Mummy. Cheers, Papa. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Happy Christmas yeah. to all.